Hello, I'm Judy Colditz from HandLab. I'm a hand therapist who was fortunate to serve as a design consultant with a company in the Netherlands called Push Braces in the development of the Push Metagrip, an exceptional orthosis for thumb CMC osteoarthritis. This short video provides clinical information about how the Metagrip can benefit your patients and answers questions you may have about sizing, fitting, care, and also adjustments of the Metagrip. This video is produced solely by HandLab to provide clinical information to therapists. We'll discuss modifications to the Metagrip to better custom fit your patient. And these suggestions are from clinical experience and not necessarily endorsed by the manufacturer. Historically, we've made somewhat large and bulky splints to immobilize not only the thumb CMC joint, but the wrist joint as well as the thumb MP joint. Perhaps there are smaller designs that you've used, but often also the MP joint is included. Both of these designs approach CMC osteoarthritis from the point of view of total immobilization. But the Metagrip does not use that theory in its control of symptoms. Rather, it uses a technique we're calling dynamic stabilization. Let me explain to you how that works. During pinching, when I am loading the thumb CMC joint, if there is ligamentous laxity at the CMC joint, this first metacarpal moves dorsally, translating on the trapezium, and it's that movement that creates pain. So we are not attempting to rigidly immobilize, but what we're attempting to do is to stabilize and prevent the translation of the first metacarpal. As you can see, the metagrip has an aluminum insert, which allows it to be snugly fitted around the relaxed thenar muscles. Here on my thumb, if I palpate the relaxed thenar muscles, and then we observe my contraction of those muscles, you can see that the fingertip that's palpating the muscles is pushed out and away. In other words, the thenar area becomes larger during a muscle contraction. If we're able to snugly fit to the relaxed thenar muscles, this enlargement that takes place during muscle contraction serves to fill the space within the splint or brace, and that increased pressure stabilizes the first metacarpal. Therefore, we can minimize or prevent the translation of the first metacarpal during active use. This is the term we're calling dynamic stabilization. I currently have thumb CMC osteoarthritis symptoms, and I have worn a Metagrip consistently over the past year. I find that it controls my symptoms during all of my functional tasks, whether it's gardening, or in the kitchen, or making a splint. The high temperature thermoplastic material that is injection molded allows us to embed a metal insert, an aluminum insert. You can see the holes here that are holding this in place. Now this insert is what allows us to snug it around the thenar muscles. But it's the high temperature plastic that perhaps is the greatest magic. If we compare that to the low temperature thermoplastics that we have in the clinic, we'll notice that this thermoplastic is very pliable. It allows some movement, but it still provides support. I like to explain to patients that it, it's like a pair of new shoes. If you put on new shoes, you cannot walk in them comfortably all day long because your foot needs to get accustomed to the shoe and the shoe needs to relax and conform slightly more to the shape of your foot. The Metagrip is exactly the same way. Wearing it is what allows it to warm up slightly and to become more moldable and comfortable for your hand. When patients first put it on, they may find it feels a little stiff and hard, 
especially if they've been wearing a softer splint. But after they've had it on for some time, they'll notice that the edges are flexible enough that they don't dig in or provide pressure areas. So we recommend that you allow patients to wear it for a few minutes in the clinic before they make a firm decision of whether or not it's something that is appropriate for them. Unfortunately, any metagrip that has been worn cannot be returned or exchanged. Therefore, it's the responsibility of the therapist to be sure that the metagrip is indicated and also that it fits appropriately. Because the metagrip covers a minimal surface of the palm, and because it's very low profile, many tasks that are impossible or extremely difficult to do with larger orthoses are very easy to accomplish when wearing the metagrip. For example, playing a musical instrument, holding a golf club or a tennis racket to play golf or tennis, driving a car, wearing gloves while doing tasks, getting your hand in and out of your pocket, preparing food and cleaning up in the kitchen, The metagrip is appropriate for both conservative or non-surgical use with patients, as well as post-surgical. Patients who are young and have hypermobile CMC joints are also appropriate for the use of the metagrip. But, as with anything, nothing fits everyone. So, at the end of this video, we're going to look at the times when perhaps metagrip is not the appropriate answer for your patient. Keep in mind that following surgery, the goal is for the patient to be able to stabilize the metacarpal in the mid position without pain. So once the surgical dressing is removed and the postoperative edema has resided, it would be appropriate to fit with the metagrip to allow the patient to reestablish function. Remember, while in the metagrip, the patient is using the thenar muscles which is strengthening those muscles in the ideal posture. Human thumbs vary widely in their size, shape, and contour. And we're not able to measure around the thumb because it's attached to the hand. So instead, to, the, to determine the size of the metagrip, we take the tape and we put it just proximal to the metacarpal phalangeal joints. On this young lady, we can see that she's just over seven inches, seven and a quarter inches. And if we then look at the sizing chart, we see that she would wear a size one. The metagrip comes in three sizes, size one, size two, and size three. This represents small, medium, and large sizes. The aluminum insert allows each of these to be adjusted specifically to fit the size of the thenar muscles of a specific patient. Now what if a patient's measurements fall in between the sizes, right on the line between the two sizes? Well if that's the case there's really no good way to know exactly which size is the best without the patient being able to try on both sizes. You want the thenar area to be snug, but you do not want the rest of the metagrip to be restrictive to the patient. So a trying on is by far the best way for a very precise fitting. One easy way to determine the correct sizing for your patient is to have one size two that you keep in your clinic. Let's show you what we mean. This young lady, whom we just measured as being just over seven inches and therefore a size one, we could determine that she needed a size one by allowing her to try on this size two because we'll see that it's simply too large for her. So we open it up and she tries on the size two and you'll notice that as I fasten the straps, we can see that they're actually much too long for her and that she's loose everywhere here. So 
this, even if I were to squeeze the metal, is still much too large to really stabilize her metacarpal area. That way, if you do not stock the metagrip, you could appropriately advise her to order a size 1, and you would know that that's the correct size for her. If, however, this size 2 had been difficult to get on and it was much too tight, she would know that she would need to order the larger size or size 3. Now, many clinics are not able to stock uh, devices for patients, and patients can order this directly from handlab.com. But it is really helpful if the patient can see it, try it on, and know exactly which size to order. Because as we said, the circumferential measurement does not really measure the thumb. Okay, let's review. You take a non-stretchy measuring tape around the metacarpal area just proximal to the MP joints. And that measurement, which we measured a seven and a half, indicated a size one. You then take the size one's metagrip you open the straps completely, pulling the straps out all the way, and you want to be sure that you take this metal insert and you spread it open ever so slightly before you fit it for the first time. We then would ask her to place her hand into the metagrip, being sure that we push it all the way down on the thinner eminence. We would then fasten the proximal strap, and then the distal strap. Now these straps are snug, but you do not want to pull them just as tight as you can. There's absolutely no need to do that. The patient then places the thumb and index finger to make a gentle O shape like this. But it's very important that the patient is actually relaxed in doing that, that the thenar muscles are not contracted. Because the most important part is, while in this position, I now want to squeeze that metal insert. And you'll notice I don't squeeze it with my fingertips. I squeeze it with the broad and flat surfaces of my thumb and index finger so that this entire area here and here is pushed inward. That now gives a snug fit to the thenar eminence area in the correct posture. It's important that it be snugly fitted here. That is the entire secret to the success of the Metagrip, is squeezing the insert. Let's check the following fit points. First of all, let's look at the straps and make sure that the straps are long enough, but not too long. You want them long enough so the patient can open it up and easily get in and out. Secondly, Let's look at the metacarpal phalangeal joint and be sure that it's able to fully flex and is not impeded by the metagrip at that level. Additionally, we look at the index finger, metacarpal phalangeal joint, and be sure that full flexion is possible there. And lastly, even though you may not expect it, we've observed that many patients apply the splint with this owner border much too far proximal like that, so that it then bothers the wrist area. Be sure that when it's applied that it's distal over the hypothenar pad, distal to the pisiform, and then you'll find that it fits correctly and it's comfortable. Both patients and some therapists are confused by the fact that the metagrip does not cover the thumb CMC joint. Well, it's not intended to. The metagrip is intended to encircle the first metacarpal, preventing that metacarpal from translating. It is not necessary to cover the joint in order to reduce the pain of the joint. It is true that that's necessary if you're uh, endeavoring to immobilize, but that's not what we're doing with the metagrip. You'll see that the metagrip does not immobilize the joint. She's able to move the CMC joint somewhat but she's moving it through the mid-range, which means that is the stable range. It is not our goal that she touch the base of her little finger or fully extend. Those are not really truly functional movements, so they do not need to occur when she's in the metagrip. I actually wear the metagrip myself on my left thumb, which is symptomatic. 
And I have two suggestions that I've observed. When you're applying the metagraph to your own hand, if you're the patient, I actually suggest that you bring the CMC joint into some greater extension and you apply the straps in that posture. That means that you're assured that you've placed the metacarpal out of the palm and you're going to provide a better position of stability. The other thing I've noticed is if I'm doing really heavy work, then I crave a little bit snugger support right here. And what I will do is I will take the proximal strap and I'll pull it like that. And I will cross them over. And that actually brings this up ever so slightly to provide just a bit more stability. Just as with other thumb splints or braces, there's no one wearing protocol that's appropriate for all patients for using the Metagrip. What I like to say to patients is the problem of this joint is the fact that it gets to be too loose. And it's really good if we can provide something that you can wear for a, a long period of time to stabilize that joint. We'd love it if the joint actually got stiff and was stable for you. Often patients come into your clinic because they've done something and now there's a secondary inflammation and there's an increased pain because of that. So generally when I see patients in the clinic, I say, wear this for two weeks, day and night, removing a course for skin care to give the tissues a chance to calm down. And often after that, patients will say that their pain has subsided. But it will easily be exacerbated with activities. So I ask the patient to think of the Metagrip as a tool, that they wear the Metagrip whenever they're doing something that they know that's going to load the thumb. It could be heavy work in the kitchen, it could be yard work, it could be a hobby. But they want to continue to protect their thumb when they're using their hand. The Metagrip is easy to keep clean. You simply remove the Metagrip, and you can either wash it by hand in hot soapy water, or if you'll close the straps, you can place the Metagrip in a, a mesh laundry bag and place this mesh bag in the washing machine. You'd like to wash it on a gentle cycle, delicate, with temperature no greater than 104 degrees. You do not want to then put this in the closed dryer nor do you want to use chlorine bleach. You also do not want to put the Metagrip in the dishwasher because those temperatures tend to be a little bit high. Be sure that when you put it in the mesh bag that you do close the straps because that will protect the straps. Now, straps are normally not as uh, durable as the high temperature thermoplastic. In order to increase the durability of the straps, we recommend a number of things. Number one, be sure that you clean out the hook portion of the strap. And one of the best ways to do that is to take a very fine hairbrush or another piece of hook closure and to be sure that any lint or debris is, is out of the hook portion. Additionally, when you're applying the, the Metagrip, do not pull the straps extremely tightly. When you do, you'll stretch them and that will cause them to then elongate more readily. Additionally, you don't want to open and close this excessively. Really, you should be able to put the Metagrip on in the morning, wear it the majority of the day, removing it perhaps only occasionally for a complete hand washing. Keep in mind the Metagrip can easily be worn under dress gloves, rubber gloves, garden gloves. For light hand washing, I often leave my Metagrip on, allowing me to adequately wash my fingertips and thumb where most of the direct contact with the environment occurs. For those who work in sterile environments, the Metagrip can be safely gas autoclaved. The manufacturer recommends gas autoclaving for sterilization. The Metagrip might survive steam autoclaving, but frequent exposure to high heat could affect the strap adherence, which then would diminish the long-term durability. The warranty on the Metagrip provided by the manufacturer provides replacement of any defective components or workmanship for a period of 90 days. 
However, it is very important for you as a therapist to realize that if you make any alteration to the Metagrip whatsoever, the 90-day manufacturer's warranty is voided. Therefore, you must carefully consider before you do make any modification. As therapists, we know that one orthosis cannot absolutely fit every patient perfectly. So let's look at a few suggestions and recommendations for limited modifications that can adapt the Metagrip to fit your patient's need. Additionally, we're going to look at a patient for whom the Metagrip is not appropriate because the Metagrip cannot be fitted to all shapes and sizes and contours. This is especially true of those patients who have um, significantly progressed disease of the CMC joint. Although the Metagrip is made such that it does not normally need trimming, there may be unusual circumstances when your patient does need an edge to be lower. Perfect example would be pathology at the MP joint of the thumb, and perhaps the thumb hole itself feels a little tight around an enlarged joint. But the rest of the Metagrip fits perfectly. In that circumstance, after the patient has worn it for a trial period and you're sure that this is what you want to do, you can trim off the height of the thumb hole. But keep in mind, as soon as you do this, any warranty with a manufacturer is voided, so you do want to be sure before you do any trimming. Now, I have found that the single best way to trim is to use this tool, which is just a scalpel. It doesn't matter what kind of handle you have, but the blade is a size 12 curved blade. That curved blade fits really nicely inside the circle of the thumb hole. So what I would do is I would simply do multiple cuts like this, and I would continue to trim until I've trimmed down, and I would go all the way around. You do want the blade to be sharp. Now the nice thing about trimming with this is that you can cut off any sharp edge that you create. So you can usually trim enough that you may not need to then do anything additional. But if you're not able to do it with this, then perhaps what you want to do is you, you may want to take these sharp edges and make sure that they're rounded. The mold itself comes out with all rounded edges. That's why it's comfortable for patients. So the single best way to take a sharp edge on the Metagrip material and to make it a smooth edge is to use a rotary tool such as this. What you use is a felt pad, which is also called a polishing cloth, and that felt pad will slowly take this down to a smooth surface. When you're using this, you do not want to hold it in one place. You want to keep moving so that you dissipate any heat that's created by the friction. Let's take a look at how this would happen. You can see that it's somewhat difficult to hold in place, but as you do this repeatedly, what will happen is this will smooth down and will be so that you cannot palpate any sharp edge whatsoever. Now, on a rare occasion, you may also want to trim the height here in front of the index finger. This was designed this way to assist in maintaining abduction of the thumb, but in some individuals, perhaps it's, it could be just a little bit too high. You can trim this by simply using a pair of scissors, where you take the scissors and just trim off the height. But again, you have this very sharp square edge. The rotary tool is the ideal to use in the same way, but if you don't have a rotary tool, I can suggest to you that the use of a simple nail file may be okay. It's not ideal. But what you would do is you would take the roughest part of the nail file, you would go in the same direction on one side, spending a fair amount of time doing this. 
And you will notice after you do this that there's a small little burr edge. It, it's sort of like the material, the plastic is sort of rolling up there. Can you see that right there? Then once I see that, I would take the side that's much finer and I would go over it to get rid of that. Now you'll notice this takes a number of passes in order to accomplish this. Once I have that material off, still have a little bit to go here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around in the opposite direction. Again, use the, the grittier side and do the same thing on the other side. Spending a fair amount of time and repetition to do this until I've gotten all of the small little bits of plastic off. Now, I need to spend slightly more time on that, but I think you can see that I have been able to take this square edge and turn it into a curved edge. Keep in mind, this is never as good as the felt pad on the rotary tool because it simply is much harder to get a really smooth surface when you're using a nail file. We're often asked if the Metagrip can be heated and an edge turned or the shape changed. I would say the answer is both yes and no. It's not unusual that you may feel that an edge needs to be curved over, but I would caution you to be sure that the patient's able to wear it for a while first, testing if this really needs to happen. There are two areas I can think where you may want to do just a slight curve. One would be here at the apex just below the index finger so that that edge is rolled slightly, especially if this is a little too high for that individual. The other area may be at the base here, which would be over the bottom of the thumb. Now keep in mind that because the metal insert is here, you're not going to be able to change the contour of this area. The only thing you're going to be able to do with heat is to just roll this edge ever so slightly. Now I have put on my thumb two layers of a rubber glove because once I heat this, it's going to be required to be heated so hot then I cannot comfortably push on it with my uh, finger uncovered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the heat gun. I'm going to just take this edge. But before I do that, I think it's always wise, just out of caution, to remove the straps out of their holes. Whoop, got my glove. So that you now are clear of the straps when if you're doing any heating at all. So now I'm taking this top edge, I'm going to hold it over the heat gun, being sure that I keep it moving, and that I'm heating only the edge. I'm going to turn it over so that I'm heating both sides equally. It's very difficult to know when it's warm enough, because unlike splinting material that we use, it's not going to droop. Now I've heated just that edge. Now I'm going to take my covered thumb and I'm going to really push on it because this has memory. I'm not going to be able to push it down one time and have it stay there. So I'm going to hold it in this push position for quite a few seconds, waiting for it to harden. Perhaps if you have cold spray, you might want to use that. But you can see now that what I've been able to do is I've been able to just soften that edge just a bit so that now it is curved just ever so slightly. I will not be able to heat and change the entire shape, only the edge. I could do the same thing down here if that edge were bothersome to the patient. We're going to talk about a common problem of a prominence on the dorsal aspect of the base of the first metacarpal. And heating and, and turning up the edge is not the solution for solving that problem, but we'll give you more tips in just a few minutes.
There are times with certain patients when you may want to add a small piece of splinting material to block the extreme flexion of the MP joint. Here I've just taken a small piece underneath the metagriff and molded it in such a way that I allow some flexion but not full flexion. This then, if I were to be a person who hyperflexed, would block me as I go into a pinch pattern and would place my thumb in the ideal posture. Now, this is simply a small piece of splinting material that is loose inside the metagrip. The disadvantage of this is the patient has to keep up with it. It does make it more cumbersome to put the metagrip on and off. And obviously, this, made out of a low temperature thermoplastic, will not hold up against heat the same way the metagrip will. But if you're working to influence your patient's thumb so that there's not hyperflexion at the MP joint, this may be an excellent addition, particularly during the initial period when you're trying to help the patient relearn a new pattern of motion. Okay, this young lady, we're pretending a little bit in order to demonstrate how to create a, a block for MP flexion. We would pretend that she has a pattern of hyperflexing her MP joint during pinch. Now, she does not normally hyperextend, but someone who does hyperflex generally does hyperextend at the IP joint, and so it's much more of this kind of posture of pinch. So what we want to do is take off her splint, and we're going to mold a small piece underneath the splint and then put the splint back on over it. I'm using white splinting material, simply so that it's easy for everyone to see, and I want the distance from about the mid-level of her proximal phalanx and then covering down part of the thenar remnant. So I'm going to length about that long and I'm simply going to cut very simple shape here like that. Remember you can always cut off so make it a little too large. Okay I have cut this small shape which is equal to the length of about midway of on her proximal phalanx down over part of the thenar eminence. And I'm molding this carefully with her MP joint semi-flexed. And then I'm going to pull the straps out a little bit so this is easier than usual to go on. And I'm placing the metal grip with the metal opened very carefully over the molded piece of material. There we go. Now, let's fasten this. And squeeze the metal. Now, we want to be sure that she can flex the MP to a certain point, but not beyond that. So here we have about the correct range of MP flexion, but we're blocking any additional flexion so she's not able to hyperflex. Now what I would do is, I find that the, we've ended up in this video with this a little high, I would probably cut that back ever so slightly and roll it. So here you can see that we have an insert that's being held in place by the metagrip, and when she attempts to pinch, she's blocked in further flexion at the MP joint. Now the disadvantage obviously is that each time she puts on and takes off the metagrip she has to insert this and it is a separate piece and that it would probably have to be replaced because it's low temperature. But this may be a very good way to help her reestablish a balanced pinch posture. Another possibility is you may wish to block MP joint extension. If you place the metagrip on my thumb and during my pinch I collapsed my MP joint into hyperextension, then this indeed may be an insert that you'd like to put inside the metagrip again to create this excellent posture of distributing pressure when pinching. You'll notice that I cannot hyperextend my MP joint in the metagrip. Now, by blocking the MP inflection, I do restrict a little bit the web space. So it 
really depends and is very patient specific as to whether or not this is an insert that you'd like to mold for your patient. It's the same as the flexion blocking in that it's a separate piece that I can pull out and take out. Perhaps I would only wear it during certain tasks or during certain exercises when I'm really working on stabilizing in the ideal posture. As a therapist, you're going to be able to determine whether this is something that you would want the patient to use in addition to just using the medical. You'll notice that after she's worn this for a short period of time, that she does have some redness here, which is pressure from the metagrip. This is always problematic when there is significant bony prominence in this area. So let, let's look at some possible solutions to relieve that pressure. The first thing I would do is I would take the metagrip and I would open it back up and I would make a point. I was opening it just on this end. And I now would take a look at it from the view of pressure in that area and minimizing that pressure. So I've still kept this very snug, but I am not going to press as snugly there. I'm going to press beyond it and see if I can get a little bit different adjustment to it. And I would ask her, does that feel like I relieved any pressure right there? Yes. Yes. So she, her answer is yes. Perhaps I'm not able to adequately relieve it here. Perhaps it's a very, fairly large prominence. So let's look at a couple of things that we could do. First of all, this is the high spot. So we don't want to add any padding because adding padding on the metagrip would simply provide more pressure there. So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm actually going to mark where her prominence is. And then I'm going to quickly put the metagrip on, seat it, press it down intentionally, because what I'm looking for is I'm looking for those marks transferring to the inside of the metagrip. You see that? That shows me that that's where she's getting pressure. And so what I need to do is I need to relieve that pressure by putting something around it. Now, my preference would be to use some type of silicone gel product. And here's a variety. Here is a small disc, relatively thick, I would think, for this purpose. But if I had a patient who had a, a larger prominence, I might use this thicker gel pad that's self-adhesive. This is silicone that has been molded to fit over the thumb in P joint. And that may not be much help if the prominence is really large, but it may just be enough to lift it off the prominence proximally. And we could cut this here proximally in order to lift it off. This actually is manufactured for the great toe, so you may want to look at some of the products for the foot if you're looking for these products. This is a much thinner piece of silicone, and it has a mesh impregnated in it. But it, too, is self-adhesive. This I would use more to apply to relieve um, friction rather than to relieve pressure. So let's take, since her metagrip was slightly large for her, let's choose this one just out of curiosity. And let's put this on her thumb. But what I would need to do, you see it covers over that area. I'm actually now going to use a pair of scissors and make sure that it is shy of that area. I'd like to round it so that it fits her somewhat more precisely. Now, we've lifted pressure off of that area. So let's take her metagrip, place it on one more time, sliding it in like that. Oh, I have a strap turned. There we go. That's much easier. Now, it does cover her NP joint, but remember this was slightly large for her. So now, I think maybe the fit is more precise, and the question is, do you feel any pressure there? She says that that feels good, because what we've done is we've lifted it off the pressure area. I could have done the same thing 
by taking this pad, dividing it in two, putting it on each side, or I could have used the thinner and used multiple layers. So there are a number of ways to use the silicone products to relieve pressure on the bony prominence. And as therapists, we know that you have to look at the patient specifically, decide what the precise need is, and customize it to the patient. I prefer this simply because when she removes the Metagrip, this piece is separate and it's easily washable. If I were to take the other and apply it to the Metagrip, then washing this in the washing machine and getting her hands wet would become very different for her. And that, from my point of view, is not highly desirable. So if you want to relieve pressure, just remember that you need to put something short of where the pressure area is and not on top of it. Okay, we're going to look at the 66-year-old lady. And just upon first glance, we notice that she does present with a shoulder sign because we see a prominence here on the dorsal aspect of the base of the first metacarpal. So my question would be, does she have full range of motion of her thumb? I would first look at palmar abduction, and that certainly seems to be well within normal limits. There's no limitation of her first web space. But if I rotate her and then work to bring her into full abduction and extension, I feel some resistance, and I'm not quite able to get that first metacarpal truly parallel to the palm. If I push here, you'll notice that she hyperextends her MP joint. So I would want to instruct her to be sure and push here for a stretching exercise to maintain full extension and abduction. Let's take a look at what size metagrip she would wear. Let's take our measuring tape, wrap it around, and we see that she's just about seven inches, just slightly under. So that means that she is definitely a size one metagrip. So we take the size one metagrip, we've opened the straps as far as they'll go, and before we try it on her, we want to take the metal insert and we want to open it up ever so slightly. Now I'll hold this open as she slides her hand into it. And the first and most important thing is that we want to push it down as far as possible before fastening the straps. When you fasten the straps on a patient, you must be careful because the dorsal skin is so mobile that you can easily pull it into the slit and that can be uncomfortable for the patient. Now she's the perfect example of having a hand that is slightly on the small size for a size one. Unfortunately, the size one is the smallest size that's currently available. So what's going to be very important is that we be sure that we take this metal insert and squeeze it in such a way that it perfectly fits her. So I come over to her other side in order to squeeze the metal insert. And I'm trying not to squeeze it too tightly just with my fingertips, but to give that flat pressure and squeezing. Now we securely have her encased in the Metagrip, even though and initially it looks slightly large. Now it looks as if it's a very good snug fit. Now when we ask her to pinch, you can see that that is stabilized in a good posture. So I would instruct her to wear this full time for probably a period of two weeks during the day, simply to reduce any inflammation that she's developed as a result of doing some activity that brought her into the clinic to be evaluated. After that, I would uh, ask her to wear it when she's doing heavy work in the garden or in the kitchen or in the house to protect this joint and reduce her symptoms in the joint as she's using it. If she wishes to wear it at night, that would be perfectly acceptable. From my view, she cannot wear it too much. This 70-year-old lady we're taking a look at, as you can see, has very severe CMC osteoarthritis and has developed a significant deformity of the first metacarpal. Not only is the metacarpal adducted, it is also significantly flexed into her palm. If I put my thumb in here and see if I can extend an abductor, I can do so slightly more than a resting posture, but you see that I'm not able to go beyond that posture right there and meeting the significant resistance. Am I hurting you? No. 
she says no, that I'm not hurting her. So I'm taking her that far, and we'll look at it from this plane. I can take her that far. We also note that she has a significant bony prominence here approximately, and I would question whether it is possible for her to comfortably wear a metagrip. I would also question whether she needs any sort of support because I think her thumb more than likely has been moving in this direction for quite a few years. But let's see what size metagrip she would normally wear. We take our measuring tape and go around her palm. We see that she is just, just about at seven. Again, a size one. As we did before, I take the size one, make sure the straps are open, and I make sure especially that the metal insert is open. Particularly for her thumb, I want to open it even more than I might otherwise because of her large bony prominence. Now, I'll ask her to slip her fingers and her thumb through here. And you can see that it's significantly more awkward. I now am bringing her thumb out as much as I can and pushing the metagrip down. But once I've done that, relax, you can see that there's significant space here because it's very tight in the palm. And you can see how this edge is giving her pressure there. Now the question is, am I able to squeeze this metal insert to conform to her shape enough that this will fit her comfortably? So what I'm going to do is put my thumb in the palm and squeeze like that. And I now have a shape that's much more her shape. You can see that this fits much better here. There's still pressure here. And let's see, is, are you able to fully flex? Do you feel that right there? Yes, does it stop you? She feels that edge because this edge is high because she's flexed and we can't pull her back. She clears with her index finger very nicely. So I would say she's right on the borderline of being able to wear this or not wear it. She may not be appropriate. All patients are not appropriate and won't fit well. If she were going to wear this, we would have to do something about this edge pressure. And I can palpate a bony prominence right here. So the first thing that I might do is actually roll this edge ever so slightly. And then I would evaluate by marking her the same way we did the previous patient and determining whether or not there's significant pressure. If that pressure is still there, then I would use the same technique I used with the previous example of using some kind of silicone insert to move the pressure from the proximal edge up here more distally and lift it away here. You can see that now that we've contoured the metal insert a bit better, the fit looks much improved, but if I ask her how her thumb feels, she says it feels very uncomfortable. And that's because we're pushing back this way, we're, we're encouraging her to go into a posture that is not her normal comfortable posture. And as she continues to wear this, I think she's probably going to be more uncomfortable than she is more comfortable. So I'm not sure this is really going to be a good uh, answer for uh, modifying her load on her thumb nor controlling her symptoms. She may do better with nothing. So there are times when the metagrip is not appropriate to fit to your patient. Okay, we're going to take a look at the 70 year old lady and we can see already just from looking that she does indeed have osteoarthritis not only at the CMC joint, where we see a mild shoulder sign, but also she has deviation at the IP joint, and it would be very interesting to see her x-rays to see the status of her MP joint. Earlier, when we had her do the tear test, she was holding her thumb in a very adducted posture in order to have the power to tear the paper. But let's look now and see if she's appropriate for use of the metagrip. So we will do the same circumferential measurement around her palm, which gives us, huh, interestingly, about a little over seven inches. So she too falls within the size one. 
And as before, we've opened the straps up all the way. We've opened up the metal bar. And now we're going to ask her to slide her finger and her thumb through it, pushing down on her thumb as far as we can go, closing it. And as before, we're going to take and squeeze to fit her thinner muscles. Now, the question is, does that fit her well? It certainly looks as if it does because we have total contour here. We have total contour here. Now, let's ask her to bend down. Does that block you at all? She says no. Okay. So this is an excellent fit for her. But the question is, she said that she didn't really feel any different at her CMC joint, although she does occasionally have pain in that joint. So the question would be, is this indicated for her or not? Keep in mind that when we measured her palm, she was only slightly over 7 inches. And therefore, we fitted her with a size 1 as well as the two previous. But look at the difference in her straps. Our first patient, the straps came way over here. She had a very small hand. And so here is the perfect example that this circumferential measurement does not really measure the size of the thumb because this patient has a very well-developed thenar musculature. So to get around her thumb and then around her hand, even though her hand circumference is the same, it's actually a much longer distance. That's why the measurement alone is really not adequate in telling you how the fit is going to be on the thumb. It's much preferable to have the patient and be able to try on the right size and determine whether or not it's the appropriate fit and the straps are the appropriate length. I hope this video has answered any questions you may have about the Metagrip. Remember, it's important for you as a therapist to determine whether or not the Metagrip is appropriate and to custom fit it to each individual patient, determining whether or not the fit is appropriate and, again, whether or not it is right for that patient. It is not the answer for all patients. We're always eager to hear from therapists, and if you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to contact us at handlab.com.